Good afternoon, YouTube friends. My name is Jay, aka Honestly Skin, and welcome back to my channel for another video today. We are going to be discussing 12 new products at Sephora this week in this video, and whether I think you should purchase or pass, or whether I would purchase or pass, and why. So let's get into the video. If you could pop down below and hit the subscribe and the like button. The like button really helps me in the YouTube algorithm, and, and the subscribe button helps me gain subscribers. The bell icon, that's your choice. Severe storm approaching. Thank you, phone. That just distracted me. I was finishing my intro. Without further delay, let's hop into today's video discussing the 12 new products at Sephora and whether they're worth your money or not. And I have a feeling you're gonna know what I'm gonna say about a lot of them. So once again, I am Jay, aka Honestly Skin, and don't we'll right fight into the video. Okay. I also thought we would do a little get ready with me, so doing my like morning skincare routine. Lots of hydration today. It's raining, so hitting up the hyaluronics because it is humid AF outside and severe weather today. So if I disappear, the power went out and I'm chilling, candle style. Uh -oh. Anyways, I have 12 products in my Sephora cart today on my phone. So I thought I would start with a product, talk about it, while well, I'm talking about a product, apply a product. So, first up on the list on my phone today, Summer Fridays. Fridays. I don't, I don't understand Summer Fridays. Can someone help me understand Summer Fridays? I don't like anything I've tried from them. Anyways, they have a rich cushion ultra plumping moisturizer. $52. Glycerin squalane, saccharide isomerate. That is a complex called pentavitin. It's very good at hydrating for long periods of time. Um, also in here I see they list watermelon rind, lentil fruit, and apple skin. That is a complex called aquaxil. Also really good at hydrating the skin long term. And they have some coastal plants. Support skin's moisture bear with a second skin effect. Marketing. It's uh, probably an algae. Yeah, I mean, let me take a look at here. Yeah, it just looks like algae extracts. Some avocado oil, jojoba seed oil, safflower seed oil, swelling, chamomile, panthenol. I mean, this is a basic moisturizer. It looks nice, in my opinion. Is it worth $52 from a brand that I don't really care for? <laughs> no. So that's a pass. A pass. Correct. Okay, easily on that one. Let's move on to the Tatcha Indigo Cleansing Balm. I did a little cleanse this morning of the um, gel from Slurp. This is a double cleanse in one. And then I did a little hypochlorous acid. This is not Mrs. Lumion skin. This is the first one I ever actually tried. They claim it's oxygenated and in special packaging, in my opinion, it, it performs no differently. These are the ones that they give you on JetBlue. If you do a little spritz of this, the Indigo Cleansing Balm Makeup Remover. 234 five-star reviews already. I actually have this coming from Tatcha, and it's on its way to my house in California. So I will have that when I get home, and we'll be reviewing and trying that. I love a lot of Tatcha products. Over the past few years, they've been a little more hit and miss for me. I think since the Unilever acquisition, and kind of the entrance and the exit, and the entrance and the exit of Vic Vicky Sai, the owner. So it's kind of a mixed bag for me lately. I'm really, really confident that this one is going to be nice because I like the Indigo range. That's $38. While we talk about the Tatcha, I'm gonna put on the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics. I made a whole video about this, but it's kind of an unsung hero of hydrating serums because A, if you don't like hyaluronic acid, there is none. B, it's just a whole bunch of extracts from the sea that help retain moisture. And there's a special complex in there that actually comes from an arctic glycoprotein that can help reduce wrinkles, especially on the forehead, eyes, um, crow's feet. <laughs> so that is kind of a big thing for me. As we know, you can clearly see I don't like that. Indigo Cleansing Balm. A gentle cleansing ball formulated with sensitive skin in mind to melt away makeup, dirt, and excess oil. If you're not aware, the indigo line of Tatcha is all made with indigo. It's a natural colorant. They do add more colorant in it via like cosmetic pigment. I don't know why brands do that. Just like let it be. 
The ingredients look really nice. It does have the Hot Essay 3 in it. One of the, I don't know why they put that in their cleansers. It's just gonna wash it down the drain. So like if you're spending all that money on it, like the essence. It seems kind of weird to put that on something you're just gonna wash off. Just my two cents. This is not a crazy formula. It's um, a, co a fractionated coconut oil base and some plant extracts, the hottest say three, and then obviously the um, whatever's gonna do the emulsification of the product when you add water to it to rinse it away. Like I said, there's tin oxide, mica, and titanium dioxide in here, so that is pigment that's gonna boost the blue color of the indigo plant. From the looks of this, with ethahexyl palmitate as a second ingredient, and then synthetic wax. I'm thinking it's gonna break down makeup and everything really well. Ethahexyl palmitate annihilates makeup. And the wax though, I have a feeling this might not be a total rinse clean just by reading it. You can't always trust an ingredients list just by reading it. Sometimes you can. I don't think this is gonna be like a pharmacy green clean or Hamish cleansing balm, one of those sherbet cleansers that are polyethylene, the plastic based ones that rinse totally clean. I feel like since this is an indigo soothing thing, it's gonna leave kind of some nourishment on the skin. I have another one from True Botanicals that's kind of like that. People say it leaves a film. No, they're made with nice oils and things. So that's what's left on the skin. And if you're gonna use a second cleanser anyways, who gives a sick next on the list? So funny. I'm gonna talk about a brand that is like an antithesis of a brand I'm about to use. So let's talk about Drunk Elephants B Goldie Drops while I put some CeraVe healing ointment on my lips because they're dry. And this is one of my favorite things to put on my lips and under eyes if you ever like just need a little extra stuff. I'm gonna do a little PSA thing here. Vaseline is not your enemy, Vaseline is your friend. Vaseline heals your lips. Vaseline heals your skin. Vaseline protects it from the environment. Vaseline does not clog your pores. It can't get into your pores. Please be cleansing properly and it shouldn't be an issue. Titillating. Anyways, good product. I hate this brand. I used to love this brand. I drank the Kool-Aid. I exited Jonestown. I don't like how they operate. I don't like how they bully people. I don't like how if people don't have a good response to their products that they call it their fault. That's fucked up in my opinion. And don't buy Drunk Elephant. They don't deserve your money. They're getting, they're billionaires at this point off of fear mongering, lies, bullying people, and basically hiding any negative they know about. So the last one of these I tried, which was really popular and all of a sudden fucking TikTok has brought it back years later, was DeBronzy. DeBronzy was cool when it came out. It's no longer revolutionary. Uh, Indeed Labs Nano Bronze, better product. I will list all of these things below, half the price. Then they came out with the ooh bluesy, whatever the fuck elephant. Like, are you gonna put them phonetically on there or just make everybody pronounce things so dumb? I almost think that's a marketing strategy in its own right, is to name shit crazy. And people are like, a blue, the bronzy, the bluesy, be goldy, like shut up. These are liquid highlighter drops. If you want a highlighter, use a highlighter. Uh, I'd get the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for a superstar glow over this any day, any day. Hands down, hard pass on anything drunk elephant. No, no. I'm not even gonna look at the ingredients. I don't need 5% niacinamide in a highlighter. If I want niacinamide, it's gonna be in skincare that I'm putting on my skin, not over everything else. Preposterous. It's preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely preposterous. From Peace Out, it's their Pore and Blackhead Exfoliator Multitasking Treatment Stick. <sighs> These names. <laughs> This seems like it could be a nice treatment for $24, especially if you tra like travel a lot. It's a small half ounce package, it's a stick, so it's TSA friendly. You just massage it over concerned areas, so it doesn't even seem like you have to do it everywhere. So I would imagine this is something where if you have nose blackheads or cheek blackheads, just T-zone, you can work this product in. And I'm intrigued by this product. I like a stick product. I've had a couple stick cleansers from like Neogen and things that I've enjoyed. I never tried that viral green tea mask. I don't believe any mask that makes dots on your face. It's just 
the mask drying on your pores. More lies. I, I could try this. Hmm. Maybe. It's also pretty. Okay. Next one is technically makeup. But it's Hourglass. I haven't looked at the ingredients. Yes, there is skincare ingredients in this. So it's the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint Foundation. I like a skin tint. I don't know why you need to put the word foundation after skin tint. You already said what it is. So it's like ordering shrimp scampi. It's like shrimp shrimp? Okay. I'm intrigued by this because I like a skin tint and I think Hourglass makes some of the most pretty complexion products on the market. Um, their powders have not been recreated. In a world where everything can seem to be reverse engineered, nobody has made an ambient lighting powder dupe in my opinion. And I don't like the word dupe. Nobody has reverse engineered ambient lighting powder to be anywhere near the quality of what Hourglass is. So I haven't counted, I'm sure. The shade range is terrible because um, skin tints generally are about half of what foundations are. So I see one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18. Actually, this goes from fairest to deep with neutral undertones. And I know this is a phone swatch, but that goes pretty deep. Like, that's pretty deep. So maybe I recant the shade range statement. I was expecting it to be shite. What's going on in this though? A lightweight skin tint that boosts moisture levels by up to 52% for a dewy glow. I appreciate that it doesn't say like 196% so like Charlotte Tilbury and provides a sheer veil, veil of coverage for comfortable all day wear. This is $49 for 1.2 ounces. So a little more than what a typical foundation would have in it. That's pretty pricey though still. Like I would definitely say this is gonna be dewy. It's mostly plant oils and glycerin. So if you are an oily skin person, this is definitely probably more for the dry skin peeps. And if you are oily and use it, I'm definitely gonna say you're probably gonna need some powder. They would try to sell you the veil powder, which is pretty, but can be a little sparkly. And probably some setting spray and you should still be able to wear this. I do love me some hourglass. Their powders are right here. I'm gonna go in with some Hyaluid by Slurp. This is a comprehensive anti-aging, well-aging supplement. A, a whole bunch of hyaluronic acid weights, peptides, epidermal growth factors, plant sugars, vitamin C. The list goes on. Excellent price. You get a lot of product for under $60, or about $60, you get 3.3 something ounces of product. I have the travel size here. So their travel size is the size of most people's full size. And this is like a juicy. Super plumping. What we are going to talk about next is some Sol de Janeiro, and I'm gonna butcher this name. Beja Floor? Beja Floor? Renewing Body Wash. I've enjoyed some of their body washes, uh, especially when they went sulfate free. I didn't mind it, but the sulfate free one is way more hydrating and nourishing to the skin, and that was in the traditional Chirosa 79, the caramel, salted caramel pistachio scent. This one is probably not for me, but I want to talk about it. It's pink. First strike. It ends in floor. That sounds like flowers to me. Not into it. Although it says flower acids. So I'm assuming that there is hibiscus in here. I have not looked. Well, let me check. Flower acids, flower acids. Apple, it's a fruit. Well, I can't find any flower acids on this ingredients list. It was all a lie. So, pass. Pass. I'll stick with the other body wash. No. What the hell? Where are the flower acids? Oh, 
Oh, Jesus, cacay oil. It's a gentle retinol alternative. It was all a lie. If, if I had the bottle of this product, I'd throw it right now. Next, moving on. Why did I waste my time on that? That was total. Why did I even put that in the freaking cart? Jay, I'm going to include it in the video, but I should really just edit, cut that out. But I put it in the cart, so we're going to talk about it. Next up is Topicals. Topicals came out with this today, I think. I got an email yesterday about a new release. Um, what is this called? This is interesting. Sealed Active Scar Filling Primer for Acne Prone Skin. So it's medical grade silicone. So that's what scar gels are if you ever buy them at the drugstore. Scar gels are quite literally just silicone for an exorbitant amount of money. Don't buy scar gels. Buy a cheap ass silicone primer like the NYX or whatever dupe of Smashboxes. Anything that starts with dimethicone. That's all it is. That's all it is. But there is other things in here that are interesting. And I know, unlike the previous one, this is real retinol in it because I did see that. So this is medical grade silicone, biomimetic peptides. Um, improves the appearance of indented scarring and smooth skin. That's a bold comment. Um, I bet you people come for them for that comment. People have come for Slurp for their niacid treatment for claiming that they raise, reduce, or they raise acne scars. Funny thing is, if you go into their reviews, there are people that, I mean, abundant amount of review, reviews that say people have had improved depth of scar treatment. So, in my opinion, if they have something that works and people are seeing the results, they shouldn't get shit on for it. So maybe this brand can, I don't recognize this ingredient. The ingredient that I know that Slurp is using is Italian snail secretion, and snail secretion can help um, heal skin. So then technically if you're building new skin, you can plump out scars. That is the science behind what is the niacid amongst other things. This has retinol. Pentapeptide 4, which I know is a calming pen peptide. It's in the Youth to the People Adaptogen Soothing Mist. Really expensive mist. I recommend the Peach and Lily one. It's like half the price. Maybe not quite half the price. Anyways, back to the ingredients on this one. It is the silicones. I don't know why I'm air quoting. It really is silicones. They're not lying. <laughs> Medical grade silicones, retinol, palmitol pentapeptide 4, so biomimetic peptide, onion bulb extract, which I think is purifying. It's in some Biologic Recherche toners like Lotion P50, and I think it's in there for purifying. It also has salicylic acid, so there's some BHA to help um, break up any blackheads or anything like that by getting into the pore and exfoliating. There's some hydrating glycerin, phospholipids, which are good for healing the skin. And then there is some fractionated coconut oil, and then <laughs> this is another thing. There's mica in this one too. Why would you want to have radiant things over something you're trying to fill and blur? That doesn't make sense to me. That's like when people say like luminous matte. Luminous matte. It's like diamonds. It's definitely preposterous. <laughs> So it's medical grade silicone encapsulated retinol biomimetic peptide, which is a pentapeptide 4, which is a soothing peptide, and then papain, which is also a softly kind of like cell turning over um, ex enzyme exfoliant. I just, I don't understand, I don't understand where the mica comes in. I'm going to put on Hydromer. This is a liquefied sheet mask that acts as a gripping primer and a light refracting Redness diffusing, blemish diffusing, basically a barrier between you and the assault that is the environment. And I have really grown to love this. And I just love the texture. Kind of like the milk primer, but a little thinner if you can see it does run. This is made of all algaes pretty much. So it's not quite as like thready, like it doesn't do the threading thing, but it has some stick. And I like to smooth this up. You will see that my skin does turn red when I apply stuff, but this actually uses optical diffusers that refract and reflect uneven skin tone. So once this sets, it kind of acts as a, um, a filter. Like, not like blurring, but depending on where you look, your skin looks a lot smoother, super bright, but not oily. And what I love is that after this sets, 
and if you do the kind of like up it just kind of your face and then your sunscreen which is going to be my normal centella skin 1004 sticks to it like i actually have to use more because i can't rub it as far so i feel like i just get a better thicker layer of sunscreen the next product is the herbivore milky way 10 percent aha and oat soothing exfoliating serum i don't do a lot of herbivore outside of i've loved some of their oils but they don't use enough preservatives for me or they didn't it feels like I want to say it was called Supernova, a vitamin C serum, and some things after that, like this one, seem to have more preservatives in it. I don't know if that's because they're growing and they have more money, so they're starting to do more things like that, but this brand never had, like, a huge issue, but back in the day, they did have some, like, Kosas type of things where things kind of went off pretty quickly. But since Supernova, and I feel like this Milky Way serum, I noticed more preservatives in here. Yes, they're on the more clean at Sephora side, but they are preservatives, so... I have, I kind of think this looks nice. To be honest, this kind of looks like something that um, Beekman would have released, or like Kate Somerville, someone with like milk. Get him some milk! Milky textured exfoliating serum packed with 10% AHA. It's not just glycolic though, it's a blend. So uh, let me check out what the blend is. I want to say it's lactic glycolic and polyhydroxy. Lactic glycolic polyhydroxy, malic, tartaric, citric. So there's a nice acid blend in here. This also has oat extract and a lot of um, skin identical oils. Uh, there is also kakadu plum, tremella mushroom for hydrating, more hyaluronic acid, rice bran. Polyalon is going to give you kind of like a tightening effect. Sunflower seed oil, rosemary, so some antioxidant, sweet almond oil, vanillin. I like things that smell like vanilla. Smells like vanilla, the Nikki Joy powder. It's got vanilla in it. This looks pretty nice. And I'm not gonna read them all at the end, but there's there's preservatives. So good on you. I think this looks nice. Oof. I don't understand. I don't understand this brand. This next product, if you just took off the name Clarins and you put Dr. Brandt on there, they've made this product. The oh, you know what? Someone else has made this product too. It's pink. Cryo-freeze. I think Dior made one. It's pink. And I think Lancome has a cryo-freeze mask. But this one actually looks like the Dr. Brandt packaging with the green text. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is a mentholated mask. You know what's funny is they try to, they try to make it sound fancy. They try to make menthone glycerol acetyl. M-A-G is what they call the acronym. Sound like a fancy word for menthol. This is a mentholated cold mask. Put mentholated aloe gel on your face if you want it. Menthol's not bad for your skin if it can handle it. If your skin can handle it, it can depuff and it can reduce redness and swelling. So I'm a fan of menthol. I use it in products. My skin tolerates it. So I just want to talk about this mask because it looks so stupid. Like, stupid. 80 from a queen. Fuck you! Dollars. Are you kidding me? Clarins huffing glue over there. Outside of their teenage range and their tanning, mm -mm. eighty dollars. Pass for menthol, primrose, and horse chestnut in a base of water and shea butter. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. I can't. Pass. I can't. I can't. Moving on. Dr. Jart. Vital Hydra Solution Water Cream Glow Moisturizer with Hyaluronic Acid. I'd get this one over the Summer Fridays one already. It has the same pentavitin, which is a saccharide isomerate. This one's $36. The only thing that might be the improvement in the Summer Fridays over this one is if you can't tolerate fragrance. Dr. Jart's fragrance doesn't generally bother me. This is what I would get if you were trying to choose between the Summer Fridays or Dr. Jart. Dr. Jart takes their products very seriously, has way more money than Summer Fridays for R&D, and I think they're part of LG now? Or Amore Pacific, which, it, that's like two of the largest conglomerates in South Korea. So, coin goes to Dr. Jart, not Summer Fridays. I've never liked Summer Fridays since they tried to sell shea butter as like a revolutionary mask in a metal tube. Like, whoa! 
jet lag mask. How about sleep? Titillating. Right. One more. And honestly, this is going to be kind of surprising because this product looks familiar to me, but inferior. And you're going to be shocked when I say what product it looks inferior to. So while I talk about that, I'm going to put on my, I'm going to put on my Skin 1004. Hyalusica Centella Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50. It's super color, fragilistic, XP alidocious. So, Tower 28 SOS Daily Skin Barrier Redness. Can you just see how this is like one of the best sunscreens? Like, look at this. Just melts into the skin, even over this grippy primer moisturizer. So, Tower 28, hopped on the hypochlorous acid train, and then nice bottle, nice packaging, decent price. And then they hopped on to the hypochlorous serum, cool, decent size, a little pricey. What's different about it than the mist? Kind of cannibalizes the brand in my opinion. This, however, is a $24 moisturizer that really doesn't have a lot going on in it. it does not have the hypochlorous acid. It is basically a ceramide Moisturizer, glycerin, fractionated coconut oil, ceramides, allantoin, hyaluronic acid. Holy basic. You're gonna be shocked at what product I think is better for four, for five more dollars. So, I don't recommend Road as a whole, but the Barrier Cream is made in Italy is $29, the packaging doesn't feel as cheap as the other stuff, and the formula is way more complex than the glazing serum that has a minute amount of matrixel in it that's made in America. So I think this lab that she, well, she, had the product made at in Italy is like a different quality level in the range. Uh, I am refilming that video as well because of some focus and sound issues, so I'm going to have to redo that. And I'm actually kind of glad I am because I wouldn't have really even mentioned that unless the fact that they let me keep all the product after I got a refund. So I tried it and then I was like, okay, this moisturizer is not garbage like the rest of the range. $29 for more complex peptides and ceramides and a nice packaging that's travel friendly and looks pretty good and feels nice. I'm gonna recant that part in that statement, so of the road, like that it's not all trash. That if that doesn't affect your skin adversely, that's a nice moisturizer for $29, and I would definitely do it over the Tower 28 because there's just way, way more going on for like five more bucks. Tower 28, stick with the hypochlorous, but even that, like, dude, your hypochlorous should be coming from Amazon. Base laboratories, um, no, Base Laboratories is the best one. I'll link it down below. All right, that was my 12 products that are new at Sephora this week and whether I recommend purchasing or passing on them. There's a few that I'm interested in. Most of them, I'm good. We're good. Largely, I recommend you save your money, but to each his own. With that being said, I thank you for being here today and watching this video. If you have time, please like, comment, subscribe down below. The like button is super important in getting me into that YouTube algorithm. The subscribe button is helpful in getting me more subscribers. The notification bell, that's up to you. Once again, my name is Jay, aka Honestly Skin on Instagram, and I do appreciate you being here on my channel today. YouTube will be recommending a video for you at the end of this if you have more time for another one. If not, I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, or day in general. Thanks, and see you next time. Bye. Pass. Correct.